morning grade elevens. The last time we looked at fixed costs, variable costs, and total costs. And the curve, you would have noted that the fixed cost curve will be a horizontal curve, meaning it does not change because the word fixed means it stays the same. The variable curve would have went upwards and the total cost curve will also went upwards as output increases. Now they say the total cost curve starts at the same point as the total fixed cost curve because total cost must at least be equal to fixed cost and then it starts rising from that point. So take that in mind if you have to draw that graph. Uh, we'll give you an activity later on where I'm going to give you a table with information and from the information you have to draw a graph like this. The vertical distance between the total cost and the total fixed cost curve shows the total variable cost at each level of production. So remember if you looked at the curve it was like this and I told you the area in between my fixed cost and then my total cost is known as my variable cost. Total fixed cost does not vary with production and is therefore drawn as a horizontal line. Total variable cost rises with production because if I produce more goods, it's going to cost me more to produce the extra goods. Okay, and remember additional good, marginal cost refers to the additional cost incurred by producing an additional product or marginal revenue is the additional revenue that I get from producing an additional product. So remember the word marginal means additional. Then long run cost. Okay, know the difference between the two. Short run means it's my fixed cost plus my variable cost. If you look at long run costs in a business, it's only your variable cost. Okay, here's a graph. You don't have to know this graph. They just explain it to you three different scenarios. If a farmer decided to produce at point A, point B, or they at ATC3. Okay. And the LAC stands for long run average costs. ATC1, ATC2, ATC3 stands for average total cost 1, 2, and 3. So, and the output is let's say how much or how many millis this farmer can produce here you can produce 700 there you can produce 1800 and there you can produce 2700 so he will obviously want to produce the maximum amount of millis but still make the maximum amount, maximum amount of profit that he can make that is we remember my production rule mc equals mr so they say in farming a farmer can over time vary the size of his land or his farm to meet the farming requirements each possible farm size can be represented by its own short run atc curve imagine if yeah, they use the maize farmer said milli farmer same thing has three forms of different sizes. In figure 2.2, .2, the smallest form is indicated by ATC1, medium size ATC2, and the largest form ATC3. If the former plans to produce 700 units of output, he will choose the small one. If he expects to produce 7, 000, um, 2,700 units, to be the most profitable level of output, he will then choose the large form, and the same goes for the 
medium form. The planning curve, just know what is a planning curve, shows the lowest cost per unit at which it's possible to produce a given level of output when there is enough time for the farmer to adjust the farm size. The long run ATC curve consists of the segment of form 1 ATC up to point A, the segment of form 2's ATC curve between A and B and the segment of ATC curve of form 3 from point B. If we assume there are more than only three forms, the points of intersection will increase and result in a continuous long run average cost curve, LAC. So it will just be a longer curve. Okay, so that curve is known as my planning curve so that I can plan which form I would use to produce on. The LAC curve is also U-shaped and is often called the envelope curve. Why envelope curve? What, what do we do with the envelope? We put something inside an envelope. Okay, so the envelope is basically covering my ATC curves. All right, so think of the ATC curves is the lettuce. And my LAC curve, the long one, U-shaped, is the envelope that covers the three different letters. All right, written letters. All right. The former uses the LAC curve to select the form size in the long run, depending on what he wants to produce, how many wants to, goods he wants to produce, and which is going to be most profitable in the long run decisions need to be made about make sure you know this part the scale of operations production quantity location of the operations and the techniques of production we like to ask this as a short question uh, for example we can say name any two long run decisions or decisions that need to be made in the long run then you need to know scale of operations, so that's the production quantity, the location, where it will take place, and the techniques of production, meaning what techniques am I going to use? Machinery, human-made production, etc. The long-run ATC planning curve, or ATC curve, is sometimes called the planning curve. All right, so remember the planning curve and the envelope curve. Decisions but that will affect the cost of production, we will have a look at tomorrow. All I want you to know is the difference between an envelope curve, planning curve, what is an ATC curve, what is an LAC curve, in other words the long run average cost curve, and what is it used for. Okay, so you don't, know, you don't have to know how to draw it, you must just know why do we use it okay have a nice day mm -hmm. chat to you guys again tomorrow